So working with Swift or Swift UI, you're going to need to know the basics in order to do any type of coding um, that you'll need. So in this video, we'll go over the basics. So we'll start with comments and then from comments, we'll move down to what variables are. And we'll talk about the different types of variables uh, from there, we'll move down to constants, which are very similar to variables, and they use the same types. We'll go over that um, in a little bit more detail. Then we'll move into learning what string interpolation is, uh, what type inference is, and then what are type annotations. So let's begin. So what are comments? So you have um, two basic comments. The first one is a single line, and then the second one is a multi-line. Uh, you will be able to do more with comments as your career with Swift uh, develops, but we won't get into that in this video. So um, let's start with an actual multi-line comment. What that is, 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 is exactly what I have here. So you have a forward slash and then an asterisk, and it ends with a forward, or an asterisk and then a forward slash. So anything in between here is going to be commented out, and you can... Um, set this like I have a dash here and then comments and have some tabs just to make the layout look nice That is what a multi Line comment is okay, so what is a single line? Well a single line is two forward slashes and then you type whatever you want. So actually let's do something um, Let's just say this is a comment Okay, so let's say I want to go down to the next line kind of like I did here and put a dash Tab and then dash and then type out something. This is not working. And you'll see it's not commented out anymore because it's a single line. I have to stay on the same line in order for this to work. So that's the difference between the two. Okay, so let's move down into what variables are. So with variables, uh, you can think of those like the things in your code that um, store everything like your numbers, your text, your buttons, your images, and so on. Uh, you're going to store all those in what's called a variable or what's called a constant. So let's focus on the variable now and let's write one. So the first one I want to write um, is an actual string. So to do that, you want to type out VAR, which stands for variable, and then you want to name that. So we're going to name this string ex for oh, we're going to capitalize ex um, for string example okay and this is camel casing so you see the first name is all lowercase the next word the first letter is, is uppercase so look into that that's just camel casing that's just a way um, you can do that as far as setting variables so it's widely used and widely known so string example is going to be equal to and the way you do a string is double quotes and we're just going to name this if I can type, friend, okay? So your, your string example is equal to friend. So there's a couple things going on here. You have your variable, then you have the name of your variable and you're, e and you're setting that to equal friend, which is a string because of the double quotes. So that's what strings are as well, which you can see is one of the types. So right here, we're gonna be talking about the five different types that you can have. Um, string is one of them. So let's see what that looks like. Let's hit play here. And it's gonna play out what string X is. And that's friend, okay? So here is what is so unique about a variable. If I wanted to say string X again, and I wanted to set that, and I'll give you some space. If I wanted to set that to equal non-friend, I'll camel case that as well. Actually, we can do a space. Goodness. It's kind of hard to uh, text, I'm sorry, uh, type and talk at the same time. So non friend is now that string X. So let's look at what happens now. Well, you'll see it prints out non friend. So if I was to do a print statement here, which is P R I N T, and inside here put string X, what do you think is actually going to print out down here in the console? Well, let's see. Non friend. Because friend is no longer. Um, the variable of string X, we changed it here. And that's what a variable is. You can change it. That's the main thing. Constants, will, um, we're going to learn about too. So let's go ahead and, and before I give you the different types, 
um, of variables and constants. Let's move on and show you the difference between a string and a constant. So a constant, it's, instead of var, it's let for let. Okay, and then we're going to do int for integer example ex equals, and we're just going to set this to an integer. So we're going to get another thing done. Uh, integer is another type right here, and that is any whole number. Okay, so now let's play this. So your int example is playing 10, which is exactly what we said. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this so int ex is going to be equal to let's say 15 now instead and then let's oh wait we're getting an error and it says you cannot assign a value int x because it is a let constant and that's the difference variables you can change all day long to anything you want but with when it's a constant you cannot it's got to stay to whatever you set it so that is the difference also, I want to go ahead and point out, I named this int ex for integer example, and it's a 10. So that's another type, as you can see here. There's an integer that we'll be talking about. And what an integer is, is just a number. Okay, so let's move on and talk about the rest of the types. Um, but before we do, I just want to make clear the difference in a variable and a constant. A variable can be changed. Okay, a constant is set to whatever you set it as. Okay. So let's go ahead and move on and let's talk about a multi-line string. So a single line or a normal string is just the two double quotes and then whatever you put inside. It can be a sentence, it can be a word, whatever, whatever you want. And now this is stored inside of whatever the name is that you set it. Okay, let's look at a multi-line. So we're going to do var multi-line string is equal to, and then on the next line, you want to put three double quotes, and then a couple lines down, do three double quotes. And inside of here, kind of like this uh, multi-line comment, you can structure this how you want. So check this out. This is a multi-line string, okay? Now let's, Let's go ahead and print this and see what happens. Well, we're gonna do a print statement down here as well. So print, and then put that multi-line string in, and go ahead and print, see what happens. Now you see it kind of looks funky here. Um, if you're not familiar, the this backslash and then an end means a new line. So it is printing out exactly what we want it to. However, if you look down here in the print statement, it actually shows up exactly how we set it. Okay. So if you if you were just to make this a normal string, and we can do that real quick, okay. So let's go ahead and and do var single line, or we'll just do var string two, okay. And we're gonna set this to the same thing. I can I can type it out. Double quotes, and then we're gonna do this is a string okay now check it out when we print this we're going to do print statement and we're going to do string two what do you think is going to happen let's find out ah and you can see here i'll, I'll make this a little bit nicer we'll throw this one up here and space it now let's play it again you can see this is a string and it has no slash in except for the end of it which is normal um, you can see that up here as well but how does it look when you print it oh it does not look like this it's in order and you could say well that's because you put it all on the same line okay well let's 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 test this let's do exactly how we did it before oh wait can't not letting you it's going to air out see you cannot do that because it's not on the same line just like the comment you got to have it on the same line unless you set it as a multi-line string so that's the big difference in those most of the time you're going to be using normal strings but you will use multi-line string there is a time and place and you will run into that so just know the difference
Okay, so we talked about strings, we talked about multi-line strings, we talked about integers. Now let's move down to booleans. And a boolean is pretty is a true or false statement. It's all it is. Or not a statement, it's a storage. So you're storing a true or false. Now what I mean by that is we're gonna do a variable. Actually, we're gonna do a constant this time. So we're gonna do a let, and you're gonna and you're gonna see why don't set booleans as uh, constants. So let bool one equal, and it's a true or false statement. So you don't need quotes, you don't need nothing. Let's set it to true, okay? So that means every time we're gonna print this, every time this is called, it's going to be set to true. Okay, so now, uh, what main you use this a lot in um, like loops or in if else statements like you, you use this to, to switch something from on to off in a lot of cases so um, if I wanted to say if our code is spitting out an image then turn bool one to false okay so we're gonna just go ahead and try doing that now bool one and as you if you can remember from earlier you can't switch these because it's a constant so let's see if we can do it it won't let you so it there's no sense in setting a boolean to a uh, constant because you want it to be able to change back and forth with your code and the logic so this needs to be set as a var okay so variable bool one is equal to true and then you can set it to false and then let's print it and you'll see it's now a false and down here it is false It'll always stay false. So that's the big difference in those. Um, the last type I want to talk about here is doubles. So doubles, very similar to what we talked about up here, which was the integer, uh, except doubles have a decimal point. So if we want to do var 15.5 is equal to, I'm sorry, var double this is the name double three is equal to 15.5 this is a double because it's got the decimal here okay 15.5 okay now i want to talk to you a little bit about um type inference real quick and then type annotations so right now you're not telling it to be a double Swift or, or any of these really you're not telling it to be a string right here Swift just sees the double quotes and immediately knows hey this is a string or hey this doesn't have a decimal this is a integer so it automatically does that for you behind the scenes and that's that's what that type inference is doing it infers that this is what's going on so let's make this a little bit better code and name it and tell Swift what we want this to be. We want this to be a double. And here's where you're gonna find something pretty cool. So doubles, okay, so I, I, I see what I did wrong. So I typed out double and it cannot find double in scope. And that's because I spelled it wrong. So my what I want you to do in the very beginning is slowly type stuff out and you'll see how it autofills. Now double, I didn't capitalize, as you can see right here. And you can see it's a double, and if you read down here, a double is a floating point value. So it's a floating point. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And it's going to correct itself and take away the error. So we want to now change the double, and let's, let's trick it a little bit. It knows it's supposed to be a double because we set it. Bar, let's do double new is equal and you don't have to tell it call it i'm sorry we're not gonna do var we're gonna do the same one double three is equal to let's set it to an integer so just a whole number a 10 okay and you're gonna see now it knows it's a double because we told it it was a double up here but you're gonna see there's no error but when it prints out so right here it shows it's 10 but that's not really what it prints out. Let's show you, let's see a print statement on this. Double three, and then let's print it. 
you'll see it's printing out as a 10.0. So it's automatically adding in that 0.0 because it knows it's a double. So that is very, very important um, when using integer. So doubles, they can go ahead and go either way. They're just gonna add a dot zero if it's a whole number. However, if this was set to be an integer, actually we'll make a new one. So let's go right here. So let's do var int, sorry, var int four is a type integer, an integer, int, there it is, is equal to, let's do 10. Let's go backwards. So we're gonna set it up to 10, kind of like we ended here, and this works, okay? We're good. Let's do a print statement real quick. And we're gonna print out int four. And you'll see we're fine 10 but down here you see it's not printing out a 10.0 because it's an integer so it's just pointing out 10 now let's change it like we did up here so let's change it since we went from 15.5 to 10 let's go to 15.5 or from 10 to 15.5 so we'll do int 4 equals 15.5 watch what happens we can't see what it says you cannot assign the value of this double <clears throat> to the type int so it knows hey this has a 0.5 so that's a double but up here you assign this to be an integer you can't do that it's a type safe language that is what swift is so it's going to protect you from making errors um, and it's telling you right there hey you set it to be an integer right here and now you're saying hey set it to a boolean i'm sorry a double it doesn't work like that so you need to replace 15.5 with this. So it's telling you to wrap it, but you don't want to do that. You want to make, keep this as an integer or, so change it to just 15 or 16, or you want to change this int four to type double if you really need it to be a decimal point. Some of your apps, you're not going to need decimal points. You're wanting it to be just whole numbers. Um, so that's where you'll do, that's where you see the difference. Most of the time, I'd say you will be using doubles uh, but you know you, you you use integers just as much so um, keep that in mind and know the difference so because and, and by the way because it infers when we do this and we're setting this we're doing what is called a type annotation we're telling it to be this type hey be a double that's what we're saying here so whenever you do that colon and whatever you want it to be you're telling it hey be this hey do this and that's called type annotations. Uh, the last thing I want to hint on this is the actual string interpolation, okay? And how this works is <clears throat> if you have a variable, and let's just say, actually, let's make it a constant because this one's not going to change. And you're, you will say test 1, oh, okay? So test 10. We're going to equal this to be a string. So this is a great string. Okay, so right now it's a string. Okay, what if we want to throw this integer, which we have int four into this? So let's, let's do that. So this is a great string that equals and how would we throw this in? Well, we'll do it with string interpolation. So you'll do this by doing a backslash, just like the print statement, put this in here, and then you'll put, you'll pass this int four in here. So int four, and now it's there. So here's what's awesome. This is set to a constant, so this will never change. However, part of it can change. So if you go ahead and play this, you're gonna see this is a great string that equals 15 because we have it setting, I know it says 10 here, but we changed it to 15 here. So that's what it is. Now watch this, what happens if we change 15 to a 101? Play. This is a great string that equals 101 because we're passing this in. This from here to here does not change, however, 
this is the string interpolation that we're throwing in. This can change because we're changing it up here. We're not changing it inside of here. Um, however, if you wanted to come down here, like we've tried a couple times already, test 10 and equals to just be, just say an empty string. Change it any way you want. You can't. Again, it'll tell you because this is a let constant. To change this, you need to either change var, let to var, so we can change this to a variable, or you need to not do it. You need to not change it. Leave it alone. And most of the time, you're using these constants because you don't want it to change. Always to put in a constant when whatever you're storing is not meant to change, and that's going to protect you. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video here. Um, going forward, I'm going to be focusing on a lot more Swift UI tutorials. So if you guys had anything in mind that you'd like to see, leave a comment. And if you had any other questions um, that you didn't get answered in this video here, leave a comment and I'll try to get to it. Thank you so much.